a few months ago we did a video about how we met about our marriage why we think it's a good marriage and um, talked about a lot of different things including how I tried to sell Matt's truck one time <laughs> but a lot of people ask us to tell I think we've made mention of course if you watch our videos you know we have twin daughters they're 26 years old can you believe that are they 26 uh yeah, they'll be 27 this year. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyways, even, we can't even believe how old they are. But we made mention that maybe we would tell the story of the twins if anybody was interested. And a lot of people said they were. So today we're going we're gonna to tell what it was like for us to have twins all those years ago. It was an adjustment, wasn't it? Still is. Still is. Yeah. <laughs> all these years later. So when you can go back and kind of watch that video if you're interested to kind of see the how we met and then when we got married and all those kind of things. But when we were first married, we were gonna we were building a house. Pap gave us the land. He was gonna help Matt build the house. So we lived with Pap and Granny. They let us live with them. And and before prior to that, even prior to before I ever even met Matt, I I was someone that had a lot of problems with my reproductive system. I guess you could say. And I'd had several kind of minor surgeries. I had an endometriosis. I suffered from that. I suffered from ovarian cysts. So I had a lot of a lot of different issues going on. And after Matt and I was married, those kind of issues. Even when we were dating, I think I had one sur little yeah. minor surgery yeah. when we were dating. But then once we were married, they just kind of kind of all come to a head or something. And I just got to where I couldn't barely go. I couldn't hardly work. I couldn't do anything. I had a wonderful doctor throughout all that, and he was in Gainesville, Georgia, Dr. Lynch. And finally he decided, we'd been married a little over a year, I guess, and uh, he decided probably the best plan of action would be to take out my right side. That was my most problematic, uh, to take out that ovary <coughs> and that tube and, and see if that helped, because I was just my quality of life was getting really bad. So we did that, what, like in September, maybe my surgery was in September. You don't remember? No. You remember right after that, that's when that hurricane come through here that mm -hmm. knocked all the trees down. Because I remember I was already off work because of my surgery, but I was thinking it was a good thing because I wouldn't have been able to drive. I was working at the Lee Company in Andrews at that time. I wouldn't have been able to drive. Mm -hmm. Our power was out for several days. And, mm -hmm. Trees yeah, down trees everywhere. Down across everywhere. The road, across power lines. Anyway, once I recovered from that surgery, you know, of course, you have to have your six-week six checkup and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Dr. Lynch told me that if I was, me and Matt, he'd met Matt too, that if he was ever, we were ever going to have kids, we should, we should get started. We should try to have them. Well, by that point, our house was not finished, but it was being built. It had been started. And you know, you don't remember. No. You don't, yeah, it was because that was the winter. It snowed so much, and the snow, the that was the sledding and the snow and all that. So it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just don't remember. <laughs> anyway, um, so we, Matt was working on the house and all that. So we were not ready. We thought we would have, we would wait to have get in our house and have you know a little time to ourselves before we ever thought about having kids was kind of what we both agreed on. Mm -hmm. But then he told us that, and we were like, well, you know, I guess we should. And after the fact, once I was pregnant, he told me then, he didn't tell me, you know, he wouldn't like dash all our hopes. But he told us after that, that the reason he told us that was because he really thought that I, I wouldn't be able to have kids. And he kind of wanted us to get on that journey of acceptance, you know, quickly and, and whatever we decided to do with it, you know, anyway. So that was like in September, and then when he released me, it was probably six weeks after that, and he told us that. Um, and it, it did snow a lot that winter. That was the winter it snowed, and we were sledding all the time and mm -hmm. out of work a lot. Mm -hmm. Matt was, and I was too. If you live in an area like we do and you get big snows, everything just kind of stops, and even places of employment uh, will often just close so that you don't have to go to work. Anyway, by probably February of that, after the September, I was found out I was pregnant. And so it was really quick. And even from the beginning, I was really sick. My first inclination that I was before I really knew was, um, like I said, we did a lot of sledding. We were sledding, all of us, my age of my cousins and their spouses and 
uh, and the littler kids and the family that were able to sled, we were all acting like we were as little as they were. And I kept waking up at night with my legs hurting. And it was really unusual for me to wake up at night, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. I sleep really well. Um, and for some reason, I just started where I couldn't sleep. And I thought, well, it's all that sledding. That's what it is. It's all that sledding. Well, I very quickly developed morning sickness, horrendous, terrible morning sickness. And I am someone that gets uh, upset stomach easy my whole life. Like if I got sore throat when I was a kid, I was also going to throw up. I just have a weak stomach. But so that started, and then that's kind of how we, how we found out that I was pregnant, and I could keep nothing down, could I? It was misery. I don't know how Matt and Pap and Granny lived with me. I guess it was Paul, he was off at college then, wasn't he? So he wasn't there very much. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, but um, I couldn't keep anything down. There was just nothing that I wanted, and it was just misery. And I had a local primary care doctor at that time, of course, and I went to see her, and and I had, I guess I had made an appointment with Dr. Lynch once I realized, because of course I wanted him to be my, he was an uh, OB uh, too, but I just couldn't, I just got so sick, I got dehydrated, and then I don't remember if my doctor told me to call or if I called down there and talked to someone at the hospital that he would have been at, Northeast Georgia Medical Center, but they said it was like on a weekend, and he, they said just show up, just show up at his office Monday morning, just show up. So that's what me and Matt did, made one of many, many trips <laughs> to Gainesville, yep. and uh so when I come in and he seen me, he's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Because he was like, you know, you just had this surgery and it seemed like everything was going a little bit better. And it was. That surgery like cured me even mm -hmm. all these years later. It, that uh, was definitely the right decision for mm -hmm. that. Um, but then I said, I'm pregnant. <laughs> he was like, what? You know, he couldn't believe it. But um, I was sick and I was dehydrated, so he was going to admit me to the hospital so that I could have fluids. Um, but it just so happened that his father was sick and he was having to leave. So he was going to have to, he admitted me and Matt to the hospital and then he had to leave and take off. But it was a practice where there were several doctors, so there was somebody else that would take care of us, you know, while he was out of town. So we get to the hospital and finally get checked in and um, and of course, and he checked me in his office and he said, which I knew nothing about twins, that had never entered our mind, nothing about it. But he, when he did, he said, you know, you feel like you're further along than you're saying that you are. So let's just make sure since you're so sick, let's do an, an ultrasound and um, make sure that everything's okay once they admit you and get the fluid started. So they did that. So they let Matt go with me into the ultrasound room and <laughs> it's really exciting, right now. Yeah, it yeah. Was. yeah, so the, the lady that was doing it, of course, she was not supposed to tell us anything. She was supposed to just, you know, we were, me and Matt had no clue. We're looking, looking, you know, we see, we don't even know what we're looking at. And she, she kind of got excited, and then she said, uh, what was it, Matt? She said, like, um... Well, she was trying to, in a roundabout way, trying to tell us that... Trying to get us to guess that we right. were having twins, and right. we were so stupid. We were like, what? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was just... Yeah. I mean, I was already scared to death yeah. and nervous and all that stuff. And I didn't really catch on that she was trying to, what she was trying to show us. She was trying to know. lead us, like, to, so that she didn't have to tell us. So she finally she, pointed to the screen and said, if this is a baby, then what's this? And we were like... Well, the little spot she was pointing at, there was five or six or eight <laughs> yeah, of them in there. And yeah. I, I, got, I got really... <laughs> I forgot about panicked, that. That you know. part was funny. Matt's like, oh my gosh, well, what's that? Yeah, well, <laughs> Pointed I, at another one. I know? think I told her we're having a litter or something. <laughs> yeah, Matt's like, are we having a litter? And she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and she's like, oh no, that's an that's a cyst on her ovary, on my other ovary. Oh, had, it all looked had the same a cyst. Oh yeah, it did to me too. So she told us that we were having twins, so... And then she told us we can't... Yeah, don't, don't tell the doctor. Yeah, she <laughs> she told us to that, that she wasn't supposed to tell us that she'd get in trouble. And, uh, and we were just, because we, I had been so sick and I was so dehydrated and then Matt was just like nervous because we didn't even know if we wanted kids, you know. I mean, we were just, we were just starting out and just, we were just so shook up by mm -hmm. all of it. and Building uh, a house. Building a house and just so much pressure. And um, so she leaves and then the doctor, I think it, his name was Dr. Miller, one of Dr. Yeah. Lynch's um, partners there. Yeah. He come in and told to tell us and, and we just couldn't. We just couldn't act surprised. We just couldn't. We were just so like, and he's like, did, did she tell you? And we were like, no, no. no. 
<laughs> he probably just thought we were crazy. <laughs> Probably like, well, these are the yeah. calmest people I've ever yeah. seen. I was just in shock. Yeah, oh. we were just like, oh my gosh, what? Um, but we said, no, no, she didn't tell us because we didn't want to get her in trouble, of course. But we couldn't reenact ours because we were just in total shock, right. just total shock. So, of course, they, you know, nurses and he and whoever checked me during that week. And the, and the IV certainly helped some. But I still, I just could not get over being sick and being having that morning sickness and it wasn't just morning sickness it was all day long so we probably stayed what almost a week yeah i mean i just couldn't get any strength back i couldn't do anything that was our sign that this was not going to be a yeah. it's not going to be an easy pregnancy right. but finally we had this nurse and uh like an older nurse and i don't even remember her name or nothing but she come in there one day and she said honey you're going to have to go home, and you're just going to have to figure this out. You're going to have to eat what you can eat, and you're just going to have to tough it out. You're just going to have to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, okay, and, and they discharged us, and, and we come home, and that's what I tried to do. And like I said, I don't know how in the world Matt and uh, Pap and Granny lived with me because we would literally be eating supper, and I would be almost throwing up on the table. Mm -hmm. And I would just have to just sit and try to try to not, you know, let it come back up. And I was just so weak and so sick, and and it just went on and on and on. And then by then, of course, we told everybody we were having twins, and everybody would say, "Oh, I'm so proud. I'm so happy for you. I prayed for twins. I always wanted twins." And on the inside, I'd be thinking, "No, <laughs> you know, no, I don't want twins. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so sick. That's what they had told me that 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 might be one of the reasons I was so sick." Because with twins, you have double kind of the hormones and all that kind of stuff. But that went on. I, I mean, and, and all the pregnancy stories and my sister-in-law's told me, like, were you pregnant and you really want to eat this or this or that? You know, like the cravings. I never had that once, not anything. There was nothing that I wanted to eat. I didn't want to eat, period, at, at all. I didn't want to eat was the problem. But that went on till I was, uh, and I went back to work and, um, Everything was going, we thought, pretty good. And then one of my checkups um, to Dr. Lynch, he said because there was twins, I needed to see a, uh, what was it called, man? A neonatal specialist. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And so we went to a maternal fetal specialist or yeah. maternal neonatal something anyway for both the mother and the babies. So we went to, he sent us to, uh, and I was like, on, right at five months pregnant, he sent us to, and my sickness had not went away. I was still desperately sick. They finally, like when they sent me home from the hospital, they sent me home with Phenogran. I took Phenogran, but that didn't stop it either. But so we went to, was that in Athens? No, it was in Gwinnett County somewhere. Okay. Um, so we went one day, went to the appointment, you know, and they were just going to double check the babies and make sure everything was okay. They had more high powered stuff and they were more specialist in that. So we went and the babies were fine, we found out, and, but I was dilated already to two centimeters. So then that was like cause for alarm, of course, because I, I didn't know, I had no clue. And they said that we needed what was called a cerclage, which is where they stitch your cervix back together. I had never heard of that, me and Matt, neither one. It sounded horrible. And they actually wanted to do it. And I was like, no. And, you know, of course, they tell you the risk is that they might rupture the sac of the baby. And I was like, no, 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 no. So we called Dr. They said, well, they could tell how scared I was and Matt, too said they'd call Dr. Lynch and we could go back by as we went home, go back through Gainesville and stop and talk to him so because we would feel more comfortable with him. So we did. And you remember we sitting in his office and I said, I just don't, I don't want to do that. I think that sounds like, you know, that might harm one of the babies or whatever. And, and he said, you don't have a choice, really. You don't have a choice. And he said, and my wife had it, you know, it, it is, we'll, you know, I'll do it. We'll be very careful, be very safe, all that. So that was like by that time, what, four o'clock in the day. We still had to drive two hours to come home. We got home and we had to be right back in Gainesville the next morning because he said it's an emergency. We have to do it immediately. You'll have to come back in the morning and be admitted to the hospital and we'll have to do it. Mm -hmm. So that was our second hospital stay. So then after that, and then I was on complete bed rest. I wasn't supposed to get up except to take a shower. And that was it, really. Was it. Go to the bathroom, take a shower. Mm -hmm. and uh, But I did have to go, because I was such a high-risk pregnancy, I had to go back to Gainesville once a week. 
and let them check me and make sure the babies were okay, make sure that I was okay. Mm -hmm. And Matt was working of course which he went with me every time he could especially if it was something special they were going to do but i had my cousin gail took me a lot you know so thankful for her to do that mm -hmm. um and some other people took me but primarily it was gail mostly but it was uh, it was just necessary because of all the uh, issues and then along the way i developed other issues <laughs> very soon after the cerclage that was like the day they did it i was five months in the hospital i started having contractions so then I had to be put on medication for contractions. And because I was, it was amazing to think back to it. It was even high tech then because I, we were so far from the hospital, from Gainesville, that um, they had uh, their technology then. Of course, today it would be something totally different. But at the time, it was this belt that I would wear. I would put around my stomach <clears throat> and it had this little piece in it that monitored contractions and stuff and then once I would wear it for seems like it was 30 minutes I think it was and then once it was through they'd sent me home with this machine that hooks up kind of like a fax machine that hooked up to the phone and I would pop that little plastic that little round part into that and then it would transmit what was mm -hmm. happening uh, it was really neat wasn't it Matt yeah it was neat so, um, and then they would say, somebody, and then every time somebody would call me and they'd say, you know, everything looks good, you're doing good today, keep doing it. I have to do that every day. Sometimes they'd say, your contractions are really up, so I want you to drink a big thing. they give me this big mug, a giant thing of water. I want you to wait 45 minutes, do it again, and send it to us again. And then I would do that. And most of the time, that would fix it. Uh, and then the contract contractions would kind of ease off, and then I would make it another day. Um, there was one other time that I ended up in the hospital, though. I developed like a, um, what was that, Matt, like a um, urinary tract infection or mm -hmm. something, and that really set the contractions off. Mm -hmm. So then me and Matt was back down there, um, and well, we didn't have to stay as long that time. It was like, <laughs> there was other things that could have happened to me, but I did have a lot of weird things. I had this other thing, uh, the thing with my thumb, remember? The place on my thumb that yeah. they had to cut off? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. There's a name for it, and it does happen often with pregnancy. Uh, and it's, I don't know how I hurt my thumb because I was, bed, you know, in the bed all the time, but they said I might have, like, put a, uh, pricked it with a pen or something like that. I actually had a place back here, too. I had a place here and a place on my thumb. And it, it I didn't notice it other than, you know, it kind of got like if you did have a splinter or you cut yourself a little bit or something. But what I noticed is that every time I touched either place, they, it started bleeding. So I would just have blood, like if I scratched or something. And um, and the thing on my thumb looked horrible. It looked like a, like a big knot. Yeah, like a witch's wart or something. Right. It was terrible looking. So uh, finally, I, I just didn't say nothing about it, but finally I was like, well, I gotta show this to somebody. So I showed Dr. Lynch and uh, he's like, yeah, we need to, we need to, that's got to, you've got to, rem we've got to remove that. And he knew what it was, whatever it was called. And so he sent me to a plastic, uh, who was the first person I went to a plastic surgeon or what was he? No, he was just like a general doctor. I mean, he just called and said, go up the road here to yeah, and the first one. You to a plastic and, then, uh, and then that guy, when he come in, remember he was like, Ooh, is that going to jump on me? I hope not. And I was <laughs> yeah, like, thanks. Yeah, it looks disgusting. I know. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to see it. But he's like, so he called somebody else, a different one. It was a plastic surgeon because he said, I can't do with your thumb. That's such an uh, intricate part of the way your hands work. I can't really do that safely, but he can. So then he called him and we went to back, <laughs> back down there. And I don't remember, did they take it off that day or did I have to come back? I can't remember I that. I can't remember. But they did. They cut it off in the office. Matt just stayed there and they cauterized it. And they said it probably will come back. And if it does, we have to do it again. But thank goodness it didn't come back. And they, the one on my back, they didn't do anything to. I have a scar there, but it doesn't. It was good. He did a good job. It didn't affect my thumb. So then... Let's see what happened next. I guess time went on with me going back and forth, but it, it seems like when you're pregnant like that, it takes forever, but it really, then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's here It's here, and I'm going to have them. And what do we do with them? What yeah. do we do with babies? <laughs> and the whole time, other thing about being pregnant for me was like that first, like when I first really noticed something was weird, like with my legs hurting and I couldn't sleep at night, that never went away. The whole time I was pregnant, I couldn't sleep. 
which is so unusual for somebody like me. Uh, and it wasn't like I couldn't sleep because I couldn't get comfortable. I couldn't sleep because I just couldn't go to sleep. I had the big eye, we would say. I had the big eye for the whole time I was pregnant. So Matt would be sleeping and I would just be like looking at him, like looking at the ceiling, staring at the wall, getting scared at nights when I'd get scared about actually having Corey and Katie. How could I have them? And was it going to hurt? And what would we do with them? Of course, we didn't know. That's the other thing I was going to mention was uh, about them. So from, because we had so many ultrasounds and so many checks because of my high risk, Katie was head down from 15 weeks on. She never changed positions, never. She was head down, head down, ready to be born, 15 and weeks we on. And they couldn't tell what she and was. And they couldn't tell time. even as many ultrasounds as I had. We never knew that she was a girl. Uh, we could tell Corey was on top and Corey was a girl. And the whole time, I was convinced that Katie was a boy. I, was, I just knew it. it was a boy and a girl the whole time. I was so wrong. Uh, but anyway, so she was head down that whole time. But at night, it was funny if you... It's as crazy as it sounds. I could tell who moved when. So Corey was really active during the day. It was only at night that Katie was active. And it's funny that that's kind of their personalities even now. It's funny how that how those things happen. Anyway, as time went on, what began to happen is that I began to get to where I couldn't breathe because I'm kind of a small person and they were both in there. So one of our visits that getting towards the end when we were trying to plan, Matt, me and Matt was in Dr. Lynch's office again and we we're trying to, to figure out a time. And, and of course, I wanted him to be the one that delivered them. You know, uh, sometimes in a place like that, it ends up being somebody else. But I wanted to plan to, if I could. And they, his thought was that when I went off the medication that was keeping me from having contractions, I, I had been put on medication for the contractions that I would just naturally go into labor. And so he, he, that was his thought process and what would happen. So we kind of planned with him with his calendar and all that. And so, it, and I, but because of me getting to where I couldn't breathe, he said we could go ahead and do it. And because twins, if you ask me, it's God's greatness and multiple births. They're, um, they have like, their lungs develop faster. Everything kind of develops a little bit faster. And I think it's because you're probably going to have them sooner, you mm -hmm. know. So he, he t explained that to us. And we picked a day, which was almost four weeks early. And uh, so he, he kind of put it all down and all that. And then he, we were sitting there and then he was like, but I don't know, should we wait? And I was like, no, I can't wait. I, I'm like, I started hyperventilating. I couldn't breathe anymore. So I kind of put, after he had decided it and then tried to back out, I kind of backed him into it. I said, no, we have to, I want to do this. So, so we scheduled the day. So we knew what day it was going to be. It was only Tuesday, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, me and Matt had to be there like at what time? Six in the morning. Six in the morning. So had to get up really early, which was no trouble for me. And oh, been, and the other thing was we got in here like two days. We we moved in here on Friday evening. Yeah. And spent Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. And then Monday night we had to get up in the middle of the night to go down yeah. there. Yeah. And we left here like at two in the morning. Yeah. I don't remember if we moved in on Friday or Saturday. But anyway, we, was, we were here about two or three days. And then we, we had to... I think we stayed here Friday night. We didn't have anything other than a mattress on the floor. And then we got the rest of the and stuff. And then Saturday when we got the... Well, and people little bit had, we had. Yeah, we didn't have much. Nana gave us her furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, but people, I remember people helped us. Everybody come to help. And I was mm -hmm. just like so... I just remember going back in the bedroom and just sitting like I was like so nervous and too many people and too much stuff going on. But anyway, so we got up and we get there. And of course, Dr. Lynch is there and... And the first order is that he's got to get that cerclage out. You know, he's got to get out, that out. And I was. His plan had worked. So I would went off the medication and I was having contractions. I was by no means in hard labor or nothing like that. But my contractions were regular. They were getting closer together, which was scaring me and Matt. And uh, he couldn't get the cerclage out. He couldn't get it out. And it was because uh, later he knew, I mean, he realized at that point, it was because Katie's head, Katie had been pushing all that time. So she had just, everything was just inflamed and he couldn't get it out. And th that actually hurt worse than the surgery, him trying to. Me and Matt were in the in the room there and it was, that was really painful. Yeah. And he finally quit and I was like, he's like, I have to quit or I'm gonna, I'm, I might damage your bladder, I might hurt you and, you know, some other way that you'd be dealing with. 
So he said their only option is, I was like, well, what do, you, what do we do? How do you get it out? And he said, well, we our only option is a C-section now. We'll just have to do a C-section. So they had to switch gears. So they had to switch gears, yeah. <laughs> that was a whole ordeal. And it just so happened, which was no plan or no wrong or fault of anybody, but uh, Northeast Georgia Medical Center, their maternity ward, they had just built a brand new one. But we were there the day that they were... Uh, switching the day, you know it's kind of complicated I know you it's kind of like moving houses you got half your stuff here and half your stuff here so there was just very there was me and maybe one other woman or the woman we could hear screaming remember <laughs> we heard a lady screaming and me and Matt was like because we thought that I was still gonna have have the you know labor and I was like we could just hear her screaming and screaming and screaming Matt was like you know, scared. I actually have photos of those that time, thanks to Miss Cindy and her friend Bill, so I'll try to put some of those in here. You could see the fear on our faces. Um, but it was a weird thing because we were left in that old maternity ward and then everybody was like, move to the new one. So then it, they said, you know, he had to get an operating room and all that, so we were gonna aim for uh, around one o'clock or whatever. What were they born? One thirty and one thirty. Six. Third, no, there's like two minutes 19, between them. Yeah. One thirty. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, one thirty-one and one thirty-three. I think that was it. Yeah. One thirty-one and one thirty-three. Anyway, so we get there and we're in a C-section, which in a way I wasn't as afraid of that because I'd had sur little minor surgeries as I was labor, which makes no sense, I know. But um, of course, Matt come in with me and. Um, and they had the neonatal team on standby just in case, just in case the girls needed them. They didn't need them. It was wonderful, thank God. They were healthy and everything was fine. But um, that was like, I couldn't see anything, of course, because of the sheet, but I was awake. But that was like when I knew everything was going to be okay. As, uh, Dr. Lynch did deliver them, but he had another doctor with him. And um, the other, other doctor said, oh, goodness, is there room for another one? So then that made me know that the first baby, which was Katie, she got to be born first, even though uh, I didn't have them naturally, um, but that she was big. I thought, well, she's big, you know, it, it's okay. It's all okay if they're big, if they're big, because they were still almost four weeks early, you know. Mm -hmm. So Katie weighed uh, five pounds and 13 ounces, and Corey weighed six pounds and seven ounces. So no mm -hmm. wonder I couldn't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. wonder. Um, and then the other funny thing is, uh, let Matt tell it when, because he was watching. He just not bothered by anything. If you watched our other video, you know that he could. He said he could eat a bologna sandwich, eat on a gut pile. Oh yeah. Well, so he was like looking and checking everything mm -hmm. out. Yeah, and I finally got to go around and. Yeah. I mean, I could see when they pulled her out. Yeah. And then when he, when the doctor pulled Katie out, he hollered and said, "Oh my goodness, she bit me." <laughs> And that was telling of her personality. Of course, we didn't know it at the time. Yeah, yeah we didn't know it at the time. But that was very telling of her yeah. personality. Yeah. yeah. But they were both healthy and in good shape. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't need the neonatal team, mm -hmm. which was great. So, of course, they showed them to me. And um, because there was two of them, I didn't hold them or anything. I wish I had, but I was just so nervous. I didn't even think about anything like that. And they whisked them off to do the stuff they do. And they took Matt with them. And then they finished with me, and then they put me in a in a back in that maternity ward in a in the bed, you know, in recovery, and uh, it was like the best sleep I'd had the whole time. Of course, I had drugs to help me, but I was just so conked out. And Matt was worried because my blood pressure kept falling. Yeah, when and that alarm low, kept going off. You got low blood pressure anyway. Yeah, I have low <laughs> blood pressure anyway, so. So then it was an interesting day because, in which I was just so exhausted, I was just like out of it. So I, I didn't know all this was going on, but uh, Matt was kind of running back and forth between the babies and me, and and it, and it wasn't no fault of Northeast Georgia Medical Center. They were really good to us, but they kind of forgot us. <laughs> they forgot us. In, I mean, then we still had nurses and everything, yeah. but it was like they never could get us to the new part. Yeah. Um, and... And so once they did get us back to the regular place with everybody else, then things were much better, mm -hmm. much better. And they were the last two born. They were the last two born, yeah, in that part. As soon as that was over with, they closed it off. Yeah, and then I'm sure they turned it into something else or whatever. They yeah. were just rearranging their hospital. And the, mm -hmm. Of course, we got to go to the nice new place where everything was brand new. But a uh, really interesting day, wasn't it, Matt? Really... Yeah. 
nerve-wracking and exhausting and scary and and uh, Corey and Katie were both fine it's kind of unique things Corey had an extra finger which is weird you know mm. we called it her Halloween finger <laughs> Um, once we brought her home, it didn't have a bone or anything in it, so they just tied it off, and then it would gradually fall off, kind of like your umbilical cord does. Mm -hmm. It was really disgusting. <laughs> uh, but she had that, and then poor little Katie, because she had been set on that whole time and been head down, her neck was, and I can't remember which side did it go to, no, her remember. neck was bent, so her head was like, and she had lots of hair, lots of yeah. black hair, and Corey didn't have as much. Mm -hmm. So they were nothing, they didn't really look nothing alike at that stage, um, but they were both healthy. Mm -hmm. And they never lost one ounce, like sometimes after birth, babies will lose, they never lost, not the first even ounce of weight they gained from that day forward. They just did really good, which was really amazing. Yeah. yeah. So we stayed several days. Back then, you stayed several days, especially with a C-section in the hospital. Yeah, we would later like six or seven days. So it seemed like a long time. And maybe because there were twins. I don't yeah. know. And because I had a, some difficulties afterwards, too, I guess, yeah. because of that. Um, but I was okay, too. I just had some little minor issues that had to kind of work their self out from having the epidural. I couldn't mm. fully, my system didn't fully wake up or something. But uh, when we finally were ready to leave, um, I'm so glad we were, to begin with, it's just crazy, like, it's one of those things how hospitals don't think about, but, like, their rule was they had to push the mother out in her wheelchair, and she had to hold the baby. Well, I had two babies, so mm -hmm. I had to hold both of them at the same time in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And plus, I just had a C-section, and I was extremely weak because I'd laid in the bed for all, those, all that time, all those weeks. But uh, but they insisted we do that, and we thought we could carry them out, like Matt would carry one and I would carry one. So that was kind of weird. Yeah, we already had them in our little car seats. Yeah, we thought we could do that. And then they made us take. And them they made back us out. take them out, and then we didn't know how to put the car seats in the car. That was a whole other thing. But on our way out, though, we were leaving, and of course there was other people with their baby, you know, family visiting other people and stuff there. And this lady said, "Oh, you've got twins," and. We said, yeah, and she said, would you, do you have someone to take a photo of you? And I was like, no, I was kind of like, lady, I just want to get out of here, please. But she's like, you let me take your picture and I will mail it to you, I promise. And you'll be glad, someday you'll be glad. Well, she was right. <laughs> I'm so glad uh, that she took that picture and that she was kind enough to say that. Of course, today we'd all just have a cell phone, you know. Right. But she took our picture, took my picture, holding them in the wheelchair, and then mailed it to me. One of the mm -hmm. nicest things ever when I look back. Of course, I don't even know who she is today. I don't even remember. Yeah. But it's so nice. So we get down to the car, and we don't know how to put them in the car seats. Mm -hmm. We just didn't learn that, and we didn't know, and it didn't make any sense. And, and, it's, like it's, right and it's at 6 <laughs> o'clock or 5 o'clock in the evening, and yeah. we've got two hours to drive home, and it's about to get dark. and. And no, <clears throat> we didn't do it right. No. We didn't. No. And then, as just adding insult to injury, I guess, which is we were fine. I feel sorry for the person that had, there was a horrible wreck and we got stuck in traffic where we literally sat still for probably an hour mm -hmm. until they got everything cleaned up. And so then it was really past dark by the time we got home. Uh, Miss Cindy was here. She had come, so she was here. So she had the house open for us and all that. But we got in and we're exhausted. We still don't know. <laughs> we're still not comfortable taking care of two babies. And oh my goodness, it was it was something, wasn't it? Uh, but we made it, and they did good. The Corey and Katie did. They were good babies and mm -hmm. slept good and ate good and all that kind of stuff. And we put them in the same crib to begin with. Uh, until they got big enough to start kind of hitting each other and then we we had two cribs and then we separated them mm -hmm. but it was it's an amazing thing to have twins uh, me and matt neither one i don't think would have been somebody that said i i want to like those people that told me i prayed for twins i prayed for twins yeah, we never I, I would have never if god had asked me i'd have said no i don't want twins i just want one i just want one child at a time you know maybe i would have had more if i could have but uh but I was so thankful. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, all those thoughts when I was so sick and people would tell me that. And, of course, I wouldn't be rude and say anything to them. But on the inside, I was thinking, you are stupid. I would not want twins. You are an idiot. You know, if you were sick as I am, you wouldn't yeah. want twins. But all that was, it was worth every minute, every second of ever, 
issue that I had, uh, all of it, all the worry and the fears and the doubts, wasn't it, man? Yep. Um, I said God knew what we needed, even though we didn't. And mm -hmm. if I'd ever had another one, I think I would have felt sorry for a single birth instead of, because Corey and Katie had each other always right. to play with. Uh, and they love each other, which is a blessing. You know, they get along real good. But they had like a built-in best friend mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning and still are best friends today. Right. But we would not have been those people that said we prayed for twins or wanted twins. No, I just wanted whatever, just to be yeah. healthy. Yeah, and after I, like I said, I just knew Katie was a boy and she wasn't. But then after I had her, I thought, oh, how would I have ever wanted a boy instead mm -hmm. of Katie? You know, I was so pleased that she was who she was. So. Remember the little toboggans they put on them? Oh, colors. yeah, that was another thing because we were the last, again, the well, last. They didn't have two pink ones. They didn't ones. have two pink ones because they had moved all their stuff. So they put the blue one on Corey, which really confused everyone because they assumed, because Corey can be a boy's name, you know. So, yeah, I forgot Everybody all about that. Didn't. Everybody thought, oh, you've got a boy and a girl. No, we've got two girls. <laughs> but that was another thing because we were the last ones there. That was just the only little newborn hat thing they had to put on, and they put the blue one on Corey, which mm -hmm. made everybody think she was a boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is funny. So Katie's neck finally did, we had to go take her to baby therapy and help her with her neck. And uh, we went several times and then they finally said, you're capable of doing this if you'll just do it at home. As she grows, it will straighten up and it did. Thankfully, it wasn't nothing severe. But in all the baby pictures, she's mm -hmm. she's like, couldn't you people hold my head up? <laughs> couldn't you put a towel under my head or something? I remember uh, her head was pointed. Yeah, our head was pointed, too, because she was like that. Matt teased me about it, made me cry after we come home. Yeah. It was just because my hormones was so crazy, yeah, but I, I forgot what you said I about her hatchet head. hatchet head, and I cried, yeah. <laughs> uh, and her face was real red, too, because mm -hmm. the blood had pulled. But, uh, but yeah, they were easy to tell apart when they were first born because of Katie's... And she had so much more hair than Corey. Yeah. And then as they got older, they got... It got more complicated telling them. And then there was a long time, I mean, years, because they stayed the same size for so long and had the same. If they had their back turned to me, I couldn't tell yeah. them apart. Yeah. Uh, I would always call them by the wrong name. Yeah. They'd, when they turned around, of course, I could yeah. tell which one it was. Yeah, but they I were. Couldn't. Their, their hair was the same and they were the same size right. and all that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that went on for years and years. Yeah. Uh, Pap used to tell, I remember he's, and in the beginning, because uh, Corey was the biggest, she continued to be, you know, she wasn't that much bigger, but she was a little bit bigger. She continued to be the biggest. She was bigger than Katie, uh, taller and heavier than Katie until they were, I don't know how old. So again, it was kind of, if you were around them a lot, it was kind of easier to see, well, she's a little taller and a little uh, bigger. And then uh, Pab one time said, uh, Corey, you're getting to look more and more like Katie. I don't know what's happening, you know? He'd say that, he'd notice that. Uh, but then at some point, Katie got bigger than Corey, like maybe they were in fourth grade, third grade, or something like that. She had a growth spurt, and she got bigger than Katie, or bigger than Corey, and then she always stayed bigger. Then she was the biggest one, still is today, a little bit heavier and uh, maybe slightly taller. I don't know, though. Corey might still be slightly taller. And Corey's just a little bit taller. Yeah. Anyway, interesting to see. Uh, and in the beginning, if you have twins, they say sometimes there's a leader or not a leader. Corey was definitely the leader in the beginning. And again, when Katie got bigger, she took over that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she, she mm -hmm. kind of kept that, kept yeah. being the leader. Yeah, and they both got a strong personality. Yeah, they both have a strong personality. Katie's is just really uh, instantaneous, and Corey's takes longer to. Uh, it really was interesting, though, to watch them interact with each other as babies. Uh, they, because uh, they never knew not being together, you know. Mm -hmm. So they loved each other, uh, and even when they were, I mean, they made each other cry a lot. <laughs> when yeah. me, when they, it was me and Matt when they were like toddlers and on up to about six or seven or eight or something like that. Me and Matt said it was either there's two things. It was either fist fighting, literally, you know, pulling hair and biting and fist fighting or the lovey-dovey silliness, mm -hmm. I love you, and kissing and kissing and hysteria over that. It was one or the other. Uh, never hardly in between both of those. But as they were 
really little and growing up, you could just to see the way they interacted with each other, how they did, they kind of did have their own way of speaking to each other yeah, before they, uh, learned, before how they learned how to talk. It Maybe. was really fascinating yeah. to watch. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, we didn't talk, tell them that they were twins. It's funny for me because I was the only girl and Steve's five years older than me and I'm four years older than Paul. So I was kind of like, I just couldn't imagine having somebody with me all the time. So I never wanted to make a big deal out of that to Corey and Katie. So I didn't. I never really told them they were twins. Matt didn't either. I mean, other people did. They knew they were twins, but we didn't really focus on it. Um, and the, but they seeing them communicate like that as babies, and then when they got to be what I don't know, they talked. They were really slow about their motor skills, walking and crawling and sitting up. But they were really fast talkers. <laughs> if you've watched their videos, I bet you could guess that because they like to talk. But so they could speak in sentences before they could walk or do anything. Uh, but they come up with this silliness, nonsense words that they would use. Uh, and they knew what they meant. I mean, it was like their own language that they mm -hmm. made up. The only ones I can really remember was the Maymates and the Baybates. <laughs> mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah, the no. Maymates and the Baybates they talked about all the time. And they knew I had no clue what they were talking about. And they, of course, they were silly. And even then, even as babies, they were hysterical silly. They were mm -hmm. always funny. Really, both of them are comedic. Comedy. Yeah, a whole lot of fun. Yeah, a whole lot of fun. Um, and then when they went to school in the beginning, they they decided to separate them, which was fine with me and Matt in the beginning. So they were in separate uh, kindergarten. They went to, didn't go to pre-K, went to kindergarten, separate kindergarten classes, separate first grade, second grade, third grade. Um, and the teacher said they, they would tell me that they loved it if they, when they passed each other in the hallway, they'd hug each other and kiss each other, you know. But we were okay with them being separated until it got to be where they had homework, lots of homework. So when they were in about fifth grade, I was like, they need to be put together. There's, it's just crazy. When you have like two hours of homework a night, it'd just be so much easier on me and Matt if it was the same homework, yeah. not two different homework. And um, the school didn't really want to put them together, but we, we just kept pushing until they did. And so from then on, they were together in the same classroom. And um, when they first went to school, even as kindergartners, that's when they really realized what twins meant. Because mm -hmm. they realized that they could play tricks on people and try to pretend they were the other one and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So that's when they really uh, figured that out. Before that, we'd be in Ingalls or Walmart or somewhere. And, as a family and somebody, there's people was always stopping us, weren't they, when they were real, real mm -hmm. little and saying, oh, are they twins? And Corey would say, yeah, and we're sisters too. <laughs> <laughs> so she just totally didn't, yeah. didn't understand it. And um, they never did really pull off their, uh, like they couldn't, they'd forget if they were trying to pretend to be the other one. I think they only did that one time to, maybe they did it to Mr. Sellers. They tried to do it to him. I can't remember, but then they flubbed themselves up and then he knew. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, but even today as adults, they both say that, you know, they'll run into somebody they don't know, but they obviously think they know them, and they've just learned this over their lifetime. Somebody will start talking to them and talking to them, and, and then they'll realize they think I'm Katie or they right. think I'm Corey, and um, that they'll have to explain to them, I'm, I'm actually her twin sister. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's something really in-depth, sometimes I know it's just easier to say, oh, good, good mm -hmm. to see you too. Yeah, I remember that. And just yeah. go on and never tell them that they, they actually had the wrong person. Uh, what was it that Leander used to say about them? Are you this one? Are you that one? Something funny that Pap used to tell all the time. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, There's just something funny there, like that. Remember. But Matt and I never really thought about having twins, as we said, and uh, we didn't really know if there was twins in our family. We just never thought about it. But since then, I've discovered my pap's grandmother, um, my great grandmother on that side. No, his yeah, my great grandmother, his grandmother. She had twin sisters, and then there was some twins in my mom's family. But then, like how the family tree goes, I have let's see, three cousins where we're like at the same part of the family tree in Mama's family and Granny's family that have twins. They had mm -hmm. twins too. Um, let's see, Dave and his wife have twin girls, don't they? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Stacy's is a boy girl and then my cousin Dana's is boys. So so that's interesting mm -hmm. uh, that we're all with the same kind of out of the same family. So twins definitely in that family. And then the twin sisters on Pap's side of the family. So I don't know about you. I don't think there was any. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 
Not that you know of, not that you remember. No. It's funny when we found out we were going to have twins, there's two sets of twins I immediately thought of. One of them was much younger than me. I used to carry around Eric and Jill at church. I, I thought of them. And then I went to school, uh, high school with twins, uh, Todd and North. I thought about them. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that I thought about and thought, oh my goodness, now I'm going to, I'm going to have twins like that. Yeah. Yeah. And we. Yeah. Even though we didn't want them, it was, it was um, what we needed. I mean, we didn't want them. <laughs> I mean, we didn't want twins, of course. We, I mean, we didn't want to twins. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm saying we would have never said, yeah, I want twins, yeah. like all the people. And Matt's like, what do you mean we didn't want them? <laughs> okay. I mean, we're glad we got them. You speak for yourself. No, no. I wouldn't <laughs> take nothing for them. No. Nothing. Just like anybody else and their kids. Mm. We, we love them to death. I'm not telling another set of them. Yeah. Well, maybe one of them will have you a set. Yeah. You can be grandpa to the twins. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. I'd twist them up and then send them home. Yeah. Yeah. You're just pretty good about twisting ours up and then sending them to the bedroom or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Sending them in the house to Mama. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, we hope that you enjoyed hearing our story of the twins. Uh, I, to clarify, I did want them, but I would have never said before that I was somebody like all those people that said, I prayed for twins. I would have never prayed for twins. But I'm so glad God knew exactly what I needed and what Matt needed and um, that he gave us, Corey and Katie, such a blessing. Um, and... You know, Dr. Lynch, I, we kind of started this story by saying he told me that you probably won't ever have, be able to have kids. He told me after I was pregnant that he didn't want to dash all our hopes by telling us that. But then after I had them even, he told me over and over again, he said, you know, they are a gift from God, a gift from God. It's a miracle that you had them. It's a miracle with all my problems that I had. Mm -hmm. so, so we're very thankful for them, and we hope you enjoyed hearing about them.